Dr. Bati, why is whey protein not good for my hair? I thought proteins were beneficial. That's a very logical question and the confusion is understandable. Whey protein differs from natural whole food protein, not merely in origin, but also in its metabolic signaling footprint. It gets rapidly absorbed, is insulinogenic and a potent stimulator of the IGF-1 axis. This matters because hair follicles do not exist in metabolic isolation. They are exquisitely sensitive mini organs that respond to systemic hormonal cues. Insulin and insulin-like growth factor 1, that is IGF-1, do not cause androgenic alopecia per se on their own. However, both pathways amplify downstream androgenic signaling by increasing androgen receptor expression and intracellular responsiveness. And in genetically susceptible individuals, this amplification occurs at the follicular level, where the pathology of androgenic alopecia actually resides. The problem, therefore, is not the absolute concentration of dihydrotestosterone DHT that is circulating in your blood, but the follicles exaggerated biological response to DHT. In such individuals, the follicles behave like an oversensitive microphone where normal background sound suddenly becomes deafeningly loud. Whey protein by repeatedly stimulating insulin and IGF-1 surges leads to an acceleration of miniaturization in follicles already programmed to fail. In such individuals, whey protein can tip the balance, the precarious balance, thereby accelerating miniaturization in those who carry the androgenic alopecia gene. In a sense, it oils the barrel but does not pull the trigger. In medicine, context is everything. The same stimulus can heal one tissue and harm another. Whey protein is not the villain of the story, but it is acting in the wrong genetic theatre.